Welcome to Startup Health TV, where we celebrate the entrepreneurs and innovators who are transforming health. I'm Logan Plaster, and I'm here with my guest, Sathya Lumalai from ADAR Health. Sathya, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Logan. It's always amazing to be a part of this conversation with you. It is great to uh, get this snapshot. We've gotten to talk in the past, and I just want to see where ADAR Health and your product, Mouth Lab, have come. But let's just level set for the audience. What have you built with ADAR? Yeah, at ADAR, we built a, a single integrated device. Like, as you know, there's a mouth lab, measures more than Let 10. Let see the most recent yeah. iteration. Okay. Yeah, that measures more than 10 vital health parameters in under a minute. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's been under work for almost eight years now. And finally, we got our FDA clearance, CE mark, ISO, and MD SAP certification. So, what we did is we validated this product, and it's a validated medical device. And now is the real fun that starts because uh, what we have done is we're using to build a platform and data as a service mm. model to help all our partners, like from payers, providers, uh, health systems, and also pharma companies, to provide data that is required to actually help provide the right kind of care to the right patient at the right time. Got it. Essentially, what we're doing is like helping with prioritization of care to the right patients. Got it, okay, just so uh, for our viewers' sake, I put my thumb on the light, right? Yeah. And that's gathering data from my thumb, Yeah. correct? And and you have sensors around the mouthpiece, okay. so basically it's more like this a scuba is, mouthpiece. This is a mouthpiece, yeah. I, and I'm holding my thumb there and I'm blowing in, how long? Yeah, you breathe through it normally I for breathe. 30 seconds, and then at the end of 30 seconds you perform lung function tests, or so spirometry, you take a deep inhale and forcefully exhale twice. Okay. And then once that is done, basically the, the entire process is over, you put it back into the charging base, and then data is sent via 4G, uh, wow. or cellular enabled. So uh, essentially, if you don't know, if you don't have a smart device, you can still use our device. And, and also it comes with speakers and microphones in there, so you can use it to communicate with your patients or with your loved ones every single day. Okay, what do you mean by communicate with your patients and loved ones every day? So you don't think of that as like a you know <clears throat> at home medical device, a way to communicate with loved ones. Yeah. So basically, when you when you really look into it, is like I mean the best way for communication today is like a smart device, right? Smart like a phone where you have an app, and then within the app, like basically physicians send surveys, and then patients like swipe right or left or say like on a scale of one to 10, here's what is their pain and, and mood and all those things. But when it comes to actually dealing with patients who are sick and old and not so tech savvy, what they're really looking for is something that is simpler, right? Okay. Uh, like for example, my mom, if I ask her like on a p scale of one to 10, what is your pain or level today? She says six. Then I ask her, are you sure it's six? Then say, oh, maybe not, it's four. So. <laughs> The challenge is it all becomes subjective. Yeah. So what we have done is like, can we make it more conversational, right? So today, like, I'm sure everybody who is watching knows about walkie-talkies that we use, right? Like in olden days, it's been there for like maybe 40 years or something. So essentially a similar thing where like every day, for example, in my mom's, in my case, right, my mom gets a notification every day in my own native language saying, uh, hi mom, how are you doing today? On her uh, On the lab. device, yeah. Okay. So she can pick up the device and then like one to help her improve adherence, like she can use it because it's coming from me. And she can also hear her physician's voice coming in as well. So she's actually showing, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it's coming from my doctor, so she takes a measurement. And also based on the measurement, our system like in the back end actually can help trigger risk, like questions, more questions. Hey, I, I see like you have this thing, how are you feeling about it? Or did you have a good night's sleep? Everything in, in that native language so that she can respond to it. So communication wise, it's very simple. She just have to pick up the device, leave a message, put it back. So it's not like real time. Of course, we have like telemedicine capability to offer that real time support. But this is something that we're still capturing some information from the patient on top of all the parameters that we measure. It's giving me tricorder vibes. I remember the tricorder X Prize, you know, the idea of being able to capture that many things that quickly. Um, the applications for this are vast. I just think about just at home, I mm -hmm. want one. Just anybody could benefit from longitudinal knowledge of their health, right? And yet, as an entrepreneur, you have to figure out where to enter the market, what are the smartest ways. <clears throat> so what are some of the places uh, where you're seeing success uh, where people are, are really anxious to have this much data? 
Yeah, I think if you really look into the, the CMS or Center for Medicare and Medicaid, uh, they have these programs like RPM or Remote Physiological Monitoring Program and CCM programs. Those are great, I mean, uh, steps because you, you have to send at least 17 or 16 to 17 measurements a month from the patient. So this device would offer that. It's, it's a straightforward, straight path to getting that value. But what we are really currently focusing on is like also working with payer organizations okay. to essentially use this device and our platform to actually help with clinical decision support, especially can we use our solution to help with risk adjustment? Can we improve the risk core accuracy um, for patients who are going through Medicare Advantage plans, like, and, and, and also in terms of star ratings, like, I mean, health plans are assessed based on their star ratings. Can we get more information about, like, how well they are doing and what are the improvements can be done in star ratings? And thirdly, we are focused on helping with closing care gaps. Of course, we cannot close all the care gaps yeah. that are there, but we are identifying a few of those care gaps so that we can actually push the patient or the data to the physicians so that they can actually help close those care gaps. Mm. Talk to me about the business model. You look <clears throat> at it, it looks very fancy, which might read as expensive, so you have to find places where you're going to get that ROI. So mm -hmm. talk to me about the applications, how you prove out, um, yeah, how you prove out that ROI. Yeah, I think uh, first of all, the main thing is like, we, we went through this hurdle, right? Everybody thought we are a medical device company. Yes, we are, and we built a medical device, which is very critical. It's, it's, it's our moat, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's unique. So we wanted to show that we didn't want to build another platform. Of course, if I wanted to build a platform, I would have built it maybe like a couple of years ago. Yeah. But our focus is like, okay, we need to have a moat. We need to drive data from this device that's simple, but use that data to actually enhance the value of the platform. So that was a starting point. So today, like, if you're getting that level of data, we are actually complementing some of those like virtual visits that physicians are having today. Okay. So what we are really looking into is like, for uh, for example, from a health plan perspective, right? So a risk adjustment score sometimes like people with like diabetes or people with uh, heart condition, if they have another complications, it's oftentimes missed. You have to either go to a doctor's office to actually do a reassessment to really understand yeah. that you have another problem okay. so that they have to update the hierarchical condition coding. It's, it's a HCC coding that they call it in uh, Medicare Advantage plans. You have, to in, you have to change those coding only to get reimbursement. And oftentimes physicians miss that mm -hmm. and because they don't know a lot of information. With our device, we are capturing all those complications on a daily basis so that that information can be presented to physicians to help them code better. The same information can be used to payers to help understand their patients better so that they can put more um, uh, services to those patients in subsequent years or also in the same year to see like how they can better manage the patient. Okay. At the end of the day, like we are saving at least even like one hospitalization could be like hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, sure. if you're talking about the, your entire patient population. Uh, have payers been receptive to, to that conversation? Are they seeing the, the thread, the through line? It, it, it's clearly there, but ha, yeah, how, how do they feel about the connection point between early preventative, longitudinal care like this and saving money on hospitalization down the road. Yeah, uh, I think we always do this, right? We take the really hard route to achieve like uh, the betterment. Yeah. So we did that with our device. I mean, I could have just built a pulse ox and I would have probably made millions with right. that. But we took the hard route of yeah. building this hardware, going through the entire process. Similarly, working with payers means you need a lot of outcomes data. You need to prove it to them every single time. It is because of this entire yeah. system that you're able to improve this value. So that's what we are doing right now. And then uh, what better place to do than like working with the VA health system right now. Okay. So we are actually putting the device uh, right now. A lot of veterans are using our system. So we are understanding what are their care needs are and then what are the, what are the parameters are actually helping them to improve or manage their health better. So we are putting in all those things and then these this data so we're going to work through this this year yeah. get all the data this is going to be our yeah, outcomes here process exactly yeah. so this year we collect all those data and then present it to more payers next year and then use that information to close more contracts 
any interesting feedback from early users? I think uh, it's so great because we're getting like calls even on the weekends from patients saying, "Hey, I did this and I got this data. How can I? How can I do this better?" And some people really ask, like, "Can I use it more than twice a day?" <laughs> and we are like, "It's it's it's great." And and for us, one thing is like we are very excited that veterans are so proactive. Okay. They are very much excited about using our technology and knowing about their health. And and the biggest thing is like, "Hey, they say like I don't have to use a blood pressure cuff. I don't have to use a uh, pulse ox." And I don't have to use multiple other devices. It's just a 60 seconds measurement and I'm good with that. So it's, it's a lot of value and great feedback that we are getting, which is actually make us feel that eight, nine years worth of work is meaningful today. Very nice, very nice. As a founder, how do you deal with the fact that so many groups could benefit from this? Mm -hmm. We all know you can't boil the ocean. Mm -hmm. You've got certain avenues that have shown promise and yet seniors, children dealing with chronic conditions. Uh, there's just, the list goes on and on as to who could benefit from this. How do you think through, when you're thinking more about five-year plans, mm -hmm. where to go? So that's where what we really want to work with like a lot of diversified health organizations yeah. or like home care organizations. Because one thing that people don't understand is like today they might be like raising millions of dollars, they might be serving thousands of patients, but when they're talking about serving hundreds of thousands of patients, they're going to hit a wall where they need a lot more resources to manage those patients' health, which is where our device comes in. So we wanted to identify like two to three key partners, and then we want to work with them. So let's say, for example, from a retail clinic perspective right now, Walgreens, Walmart, CVS, everybody, uh, even Kruger right now, like they, they are in um, uh, providing retail clinic services and, and clinical trial services. But the thing is, they don't have a technology that is in the patient's home that can actually collect a more holistic 360 degree view of a patient health. So that's what we are offering to them. We can offer data as a service to them so that they can provide the kind of care that is required. We don't want to be doing a lot of things. We don't want to be everything for everyone, sure. but rather be that integrator for all these different technologies. So that how I really look at it like five years from today, like remember, like think about like a million people using our device, right? We know exactly which patient needs what kind of care, who needs to be sent to a retail clinic, who needs to send to be a hospital, who needs care at home. We would be able to figure out exactly which patient needs the kind of care. And that's what is a real innovation that I think, and that's what is going to actually drive our device growth and our company growth. And that has so many cascading benefits of knowing who needs what level in terms of cost and quality and access the whole the whole deal. Um, what are you most excited about for 2023? We are very excited about like the VA partnership, as I said, and uh, we recently closed a $4 million seed round. Congratulations. So, which has been phenomenal, especially in this uh, yes. climate, we were able to secure those funding. Fantastic. So what we're really looking forward is to actually expand our team, expand some of the sensors and capabilities within the device, right? Because we built a platform, so we are planning to add more sensors to the device so that like we wanted to get into that, our, our mission of collecting hundreds of thousands of health parameters in less than a minute. So we're working on technology development, we're working on business development, and also working on outcomes development. So this year is going to be very exciting for us. What's your advice to a founder who is also trying to get into a hardware device and is looking at the, the challenge of FDA approval? So I would say start off, I mean, understanding that it's going to be like a five to six year effort. It's more yeah. like a, doing a PhD. <laughs> yeah. So you have, to, you have to just put in that effort. Uh, but more importantly, start small. Because uh, I would say if, you, if you're passionate about like doing something in a medical device, start with a smaller claim. Don't, don't go to something like really high level. Because in our case, like it, it's a mistake. I wanted to tell the world that like start with small. So we started, when we started, we, we put like all these 10 parameters in there. We wanted like cellular enablement. We wanted uh, the speakers and we wanted the microphones. We want to do everything. Yeah. We want to build that amazing device, but it took really a long time. So instead, uh, if I wanted to go back and do it again, I would have probably focused on just a Bluetooth enabled device to start yeah. with, get our FDA clearance, or even start with like three or four parameters. Um, so that's what I would say is like, it's, it's a hard journey, but 
it's also very important. Like it's at yeah. the end of the day, it's a medical device. Yeah. It has to have that level of quality. There's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. No and shortcuts. and and uh, my principle is like, whatever you're building, would you give it to your mom, right? Yeah. And and trust that device. That's what is my benchmark, and uh, that's what I would like recommend every entrepreneur to do is like, would you give this to your family, right? Whatever you're building, and if you're confident that, then th that's it. You're, yeah. you're, you're done with the product development, now go sell it. You said that if you could go back in a time machine, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, you might do this incrementally, change how you develop the product. What's, an, what's another piece of advice that you might give to your uh, eight year younger self? I would say uh, from, from the, going back eight years, I would say there are a lot of things that could have been done different. Like I would have uh, like actually changed the trajectory of uh, some of those investments. Like, like we, we, every time we get like all these different kinds of uh, partners coming in saying, hey, this is great. Can we use it for this thing? When can we use it for another application? Instead of running after every single mm. uh, so like focus. opportunity, uh, we could have just focused. Because uh, at every entrepreneur feels like, hey, every opportunity, everyone we talk to, uh, is going to lead to something uh, meaningful, but 90% of the time that's not going to happen. So I would say like really focus, narrow focus on what you really wanted to do, even though it might not be relevant at that time, it, it will be relevant uh, once you prove value. So that's what I would say. I love it. Satya, yeah. thanks so much for your time. It is inspiring to watch you continue to push on this mission. I know it's been long, it's been hard, uh, but with the FDA approval, the CE mark, with the VA deal, you are making moves to help people in a meaningful way. So, so keep pushing, and thanks for joining me today. No, thanks for the opportunity. Really right. grateful. Take care.